In this affordable curly hair routine, I'm gonna show you how you can achieve volume, more clumped curls, and prevent frizz. My name is Gina and welcome to my channel. Here we talk all things naturally curly and I love helping you problem solve with your curls, which we're going to do here today because if you struggle with stringiness and thin, low density hair like me, then you know the struggle of wanting to achieve nice curl clumps, but then also not wanting to reduce your volume. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. I'm gonna be using some products from Umberto Giannini, who is kindly partnering with me for this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Did you know that buildup on the hair can make the hair look really stringy and dull? If you're not clarifying on a regular basis, that buildup that's on your hair could lead to stringy curls that won't clump together because your products can't absorb. So what you need to do is rotate your regular shampoos like I'm going to use today with your clarifying shampoo. So those are ones that are a little bit stronger. I don't need to clarify today, so I am just going to use the Umberto Giannini Curl Defining Shampoo. This is a regular shampoo, but it's still really effective. So I still recommend using a good lathering shampoo on the other days when you just need a regular cleanse and you don't have a ton of buildup. But if you do have buildup, Swap out your shampoo for a clarifying shampoo. I like to do a clarifying wash maybe two times a month or so. It just depends on how much buildup that you have on your hair. Let's get this stringy hair washed. So I'm starting off with the Umberto Giannini Curl Jelly Wash, which is one of my favorite affordable shampoos. I'm sure you all have heard me talk about this so many times in the past. It gives a really nice lather, which makes it easy to spread around. I need a good lather when it comes to my shampoos. If you need more lather, just add a little bit of water. That's what I did and it really foamed up. It just this helps it spread so much easier and I definitely feel like I'm getting a deeper clean. The suds actually reach down to my scalp and you want to spend a lot of time actually scrubbing at your scalp with the pads of your fingers to make sure that you're removing any leftover product residue. Oftentimes I will go in with two rounds of shampoo to make sure it's fully clean, but I felt like I had a pretty good cleanse this time with just one, so I ended up just doing one round. I also usually focus on my scalp and then I will bring the lather down the lengths of my hair. So I actually removed some of the tangles before I shampooed, just a little bit of dry detangling and to remove some loose hairs. So luckily my hair is not very matted. Clumped curls require moisture. So the next step is to condition with the Curl Jelly Care Defrizz Conditioner. This is going to really moisturize the hair without weighing it down. It's silicone free and contains several of my favorite ingredients, including polyquaternium. These create a lightweight conditioning film on the hair, which will help smooth out wet frizz and humidity proof the hair. I'm just using it to gently remove any tangles that might have formed during the shampoo process, starting at the ends and working my way up. As you can see, they glide right out. I always detangle with my hands because it's the safest method, but I do like to brush through my hair with the conditioner in afterwards, just to make sure it's fully coated and then I scrunch it in with some water. This can really help increase the absorption and plump up the curls. If you're someone with low porosity hair where products and water tend to kind of sit on the surface and you don't notice your conditioner soaking in, try giving it a little pulse with some water in your hands and you'll really get that hydration. Make sure you rinse it out fully and we're ready to style. Stay tuned for the styling portion next because I'm gonna show you how you can get juicy curl clumps even when your hair does not clump naturally, but we're gonna go style upright and not break her backs over the tub. Now it's time to style the hair, but first we need to mist our hair down with some water to make sure that it's evenly wet. So I like to apply my products on hair that is in between damp and wet. So I don't like it to be soaking wet to where it's dripping, but I also don't want it to be dry and stringy because like we mentioned, clump curls are moisturized curls. So I like to first towel dry my hair, mainly my roots, then I mist it down with water and I'm always adding more water too as I go. I keep the spray bottle on hand. If your hair is too dry, it will be difficult to clump and it will look stringy and frizzy. Soaking wet hair will give you more clumps, but since my hair is low density, I still want to achieve more volume. So I don't want to use too much water because it really does weigh down the hair and over clumps the hair. It's definitely a fine line. So I aim for my hair to be evenly wet, but not dripping and soaking my shirt. Also, I'm just brushing through to smooth everything out because it's going to make it so much easier to apply our products if everything is nice and smooth and we're going to be sectioning today. Now for styling, you want to start with something that is moisturizing to really clump the curls. I usually go with a curl cream or a leave-in conditioner. If you do wanna use a leave-in, I recommend the banana butter from Umberto Giannini. But I wanted to share a very lightweight routine today for those of you who struggle with everything weighing down your hair. So I opted for no leave-in today and we're going straight to the Curl Whip Curl Activating Mousse for our stylers today. I also added a bit more water to my hair because again, we wanna make sure that it's evenly wet and it was feeling a little bit dry down at the scalp. 
The Curl Whip Curl Activating Mousse from Umbertio Giannini provides a medium hold and it's moisturizing, so it is a good option for a base product if you struggle with creams weighing down your hair. I definitely applied a little bit too much of this. I even had to wipe some off on a towel because when you apply mousse to your palm, it tends to really expand, so just keep that in mind. But I don't mind applying quite a bit of mousse because it does really help to clump up the curls. So creams, leave-in conditioners such as the banana butter are ideal if you have very dry hair because they will help to moisturize the hair and prevent stringy curls. But this mousse also is moisturizing as well and it's a more lightweight option. So if you're someone with fine hair, maybe try just a mousse. And note this mousse does contain a water-soluble silicone, which will actually help to condition the hair. But if you prefer a silicone-free option, go with the banana butter leave-in because that one's silicone-free. I also like to brush my hair after applying my base product just to make sure it's evenly distributed and then I will run my fingers through. I'm doing a bit of brush styling, which we will talk about in just a moment, but I didn't want to over clump the lower section of my hair because I still want to maintain quite a bit of volume. So I don't usually do much styling to the lower section. I'm just kind of smoothing everything out and making sure the curl clump size is pretty even. The next step is critical if you want long lasting frizz protection and that is to apply a gel. So I'm going with the Umberto Giannini Curl Jelly, which is a medium hold gel and it contains humidity blocking ingredients. It's silicone free, it has a lot of shine and it's also non-drying. It is a clear formula, but it's actually not that thick, sticky, goopy type of formula that I don't love. This is actually pretty smooth and has a good amount of slip and it's also pretty lightweight as well. If you want mega definition, you can apply your gel before before you do any styling techniques like brush styling and this will ensure that the gel is evenly coated in the hair. However, I want to maintain some volume today so I'm actually just going to scrunch in the curl jelly on top of my hair after styling. The mousse still provides great hold and the curl jelly is just adding a bit more hold to my hair so I wasn't as worried about getting it coated on every single strand but I might try next time with the mousse and the curl jelly and brushing that through. So if your curls don't magically clump naturally, then you'll need to do some sort of styling technique. Mine don't naturally clump very easily. They do some on the bottom, but the top section really needs some help or else it dries really stringy and frizzy. So there's several different styling techniques that you can try to just encourage the curls. Some require a brush and some don't. My preferred method is brush styling because it's quick and effective and it also really helps to smooth out frizz. If you have coarser textured hair, brush styling is really going to help because it just creates the smoothness that's really hard to achieve with just your hands. And any brush will do, but you basically just need a bit of tension against your hair. So if you're using a brush that doesn't have a lot of bristles and isn't very dense, you'll probably just need to apply a little bit of pressure with your other hand. I also like to turn my wrist a little bit just to encourage the curl to spiral. When I'm brush styling around my face framing pieces and any areas where I have a lot of grays, which is right around my hairline, I like to do the brush coiling technique and that just involves wrapping the hair around the handle of the brush. So it really helps if you have a brush that has a smooth plastic handle like this one that I'm using, but you can do it with a regular brush. Just make sure it's not going to snag your hair and make sure you have plenty of slip in your hair and be very gentle. You don't wanna cause any breakage or harm to your hair, so be gentle with it. But as you can see, it really helps to clump the curls together with that coiling technique. So the hair is not only going through the bristles, but it's also going around the handle of the brush. This is sort of like a hybrid method between brush styling and brush coiling because the original brush coiling method involves like completely wrapping the hair around the handle as you come down the strand. I'm just kind of turning it around the base of the bristles as I go down the strand. Then you just wanna scrunch your hair afterward. I am applying a little bit of gel to my hands as I'm scrunching because I did apply my gel after I brush styled. And if your hair doesn't curl up, then it could be that you're turning it in the wrong direction. So you might wanna try the other way and see if that helps. Other causes include not having enough water in your hair or just a brush that doesn't give you enough tension. And brush styling might not work for everyone, especially if you have looser curls or waves, you may want to try other techniques like the praying hands or rake and shake method, just anything to encourage the curls. You don't have to do brush styling. I also like to do a little bit of finger coiling, which is another styling technique that's great if you have curls that don't know which direction they wanna go in. Maybe you have some short baby hairs around your hairline. This really helps me in this area. So I usually will brush style them and then I'll kind of wrap it around at my finger once just to help it go in the right direction. 
Overall, I don't stress about it being perfect by any means, and I'm really only styling the top section of my hair, just those are the areas that give me a fit when it comes to stringiness. You have to put in that effort on wash day if you do wanna have those clumped curls, because if you don't, then it's just gonna end up stringy by the end of the day or by day two if you're someone who struggles with clumping like I do. And then it will save you time because you won't have to do much refreshing, if any. I also do a bit of that praying hands technique, which is just where you smush the hair between two palms for any areas that are being stubborn and looking really stringy. Stringy. If your hair is very stringy on the ends, it's likely time for a trim. I'm definitely due for a trim. Getting haircuts regularly have significantly improved the clumping in my curls. Since my hair is low density, I really need to keep it short because once it starts to grow too long, the ends become sparse and stringy. It doesn't matter how long I grow my hair, the ends always end up very thin. So keeping more of a blunt straight cut has helped me and I don't really have any layers at all in my hair because that just makes them look even stringier. This is optional, but it can really help to speed up your dry time and enhance your curl clumps. Take your hair towel, ideally where it's still wet. If it's not wet, mist it with some water and then scrunch your hair gently. Pinch the roots with your other hand just so you can get all the way up to encourage those root curls. If frizz forms, you can always just glaze in an extra layer of gel on top. I always like to do this and it adds so much more hold to and extra frizz protections. So a couple extra tips if you have low density hair like me, make sure your hair is not overly clumped. I always check it before I start drying my hair to make sure that the clump size is where I want it because if your hair is too clumped, it will definitely make it look a lot thinner. I also did shake out my roots and that's just to break up any areas where the scalp might be showing from clumping the hair. You don't want the hair at the scalp to be clumped, if that makes sense. Now I'm going to diffuse, which is my preferred drying method because I get the most definition, shrinkage, and volume when I diffuse. So diffusing gives you much more control over the outcome of your curls and they're done right away versus with air drying, the curls can become frizzy and misshaped during the long air drying process. The frizz will really start to form as you're sitting and going about your day and there's friction against your hair during that drying process. If it's humid where you live, definitely opt for diffusing to prevent the humidity from ruining your curls as they dry. I also use the prongs of the diffuser to really lift my roots. This gives me so much more volume. Every time I air dry, my hair ends up so stringy. So diffusing really does help to set those curl clumps and that curl shape into place. Now my hair is finished drying, but I wanted to show you how my hair looks while it's still in the cast and how clumped that it is. I'm definitely gonna be separating some of these because I want even more folded. But if you like big curl clumps, you could totally leave it like this. It just makes my curls look not quite as full and voluminous when it's overly clumped. Typically I will try and avoid large clumps while I'm styling. It's a lot easier to separate them while your hair is wet because once you try and separate these really big curl clumps while your hair is dry, you can get frizz, especially when using medium to light hold products like what I have in my hair right now. Also look how clumped it is on the lower section. The lower half of my hair is definitely a lot healthier, so it really clumped up with this routine. So to separate the curls, you wanna make sure your hands are dry. You can also have a little bit of an oil or a serum on your hands if you want, but I just prefer dry hands. You just wanna look at where the curls are naturally separating, especially if you have different curl patterns like I do that go in all different directions. It's really easy to see this. Whereas if your curls are all the same pattern, then it might be harder to see this. But I basically just start unraveling them from the bottom. That's gonna prevent frizz. But when I do that, sometimes it does get a little bit frizzier, but I just try and look at where it's separating unravel it in the opposite direction. If your curls like to clump back together, especially underneath, you might have to do this like every day when you refresh. A lot of times when I'm refreshing, I do separate large curl clumps, but you really wanna focus on that separation while your hair is still wet and while you're styling on wash day, that will help prevent you from having to do a lot of separation afterward. If you do end up with some frizz when you're separating curl clumps, just add a little bit of water and maybe even some of the mousse or the gel on your hands and then just run over those strands and you'll see that definition come right back. This is also going to give you a ton more hold too because like we've already talked about, if you're adding gel on hair that's more dry, it's going to give you much stronger of a cast. So if you get those annoying frizzy ends when you're diffusing or if your hair is just higher porosity on the ends like me then you'll definitely want to do a little bit of touch up i also do this over the top section of my hair because i do get some root frizz and some flyaways i just misted my hands with a little bit of water added a tiny little pea size amount of the curl jelly gel and then just smoothed over the surface this is kind of like using a hairspray to tame flyaways and it works like a charm 
What do y'all think of these wash day results? I'm really liking the amount of volume that I have and it still looks like I have really nice clumps without them being over clumped because we separated some of them. You still get that great definition that comes with curl clumps, but you can still have volume. It's now day two after doing the Umberto Genini routine and I wanted to show you my results outside where you can really get a good look at the frizz, but it's been way more humid outside. It was very humid yesterday and today, like I'm sweating just standing out here to show you guys this but my hair still looks really good. The curl clumps look good. It was definitely very clumped this morning. So I did separate some of the clumps with my hands, which probably caused some frizz. And I also have a terrible habit of touching my hair. And I was doing a lot of that yesterday and today. That's how it is with medium hold gels. Medium hold gels are great because they give you volume, but you might have to do some touch-ups on day two or just leave it if you don't mind some frizz. So I definitely have some frizz on the top section, which for me, is always a lot frizzier because it is more high porosity. But if you look at the lower section, look how much better the lower section looks. The lower section's a lot healthier. It holds on to moisture so much better. It's less frizzy, feels really soft, but my top coarse high porosity section is definitely needing a little bit of moisture, but not too bad. It's giving me some volume, which I like. And the curl definition still looks really good. I really think the curl whip helped with achieving more volume because it has so much water in it. It will help with those curl clumps and help give you those very plump curls. I also wanted to show you what my hair looks like when using just the mousse by itself. I will put up a clip here on the screen if you want to see that because I did test it out by itself first. And I would say I got about the same amount of hold. It was a medium hold. I did have to add a little bit of mousse on top of dry hair to touch up a few frizzy ends after diffusing. And that definitely added a ton of hold. So with both of these products, if you do want to add more hold, just add a little bit of product onto dry hair and you will get much longer lasting results. And you guys seem to find it helpful when I compare these products or this routine to other previous ones, because I know I do a lot of different hair routines using similar products. So the main difference with this routine is it's using more affordable products compared to other routines that I've done. This mousse also doesn't give like a very texturized feeling. So if that's not something you like in your hair and you just want to mousse without that, residue feeling, then this is definitely one that you'll want to go with. I do find it very moisturizing. It is different than the other mousses that I've tried recently. Maybe I'll do a comparison video kind of comparing all of them together. Let me know if you would want to see that. And in terms of how this gel differs from a lot of the gels that I talk about here on my channel, this one again is an affordable option for you. It still contains humidity blocking ingredients in it. It is very lightweight. It's not quite as liquidy as some other ones, but it's also not thick and sticky either. It's right there in between. It's just like your classic medium weight gel. So I definitely do think it is a good option, especially if you're looking for something affordable. So I'm gonna link you to the products down below. You can find them on Amazon. That's how you can get them here in the US because they are a UK brand, but they're really affordable on Amazon. So I will link you to all of them. And I'll also put the other products like the banana butter too that I recommend from Umberto Giannini because I think that would pair really nicely with these products. If you want some more help when it comes to stringy curls and getting more clumps, but on refresh day, check out one of the videos that I did not too long ago, all about how to prevent stringiness on refresh days and how to reclump your curls. So that way they look a lot nicer and you can touch them up throughout the week and get longer lasting curl clumps. I will have that video linked right here on the screen and I will talk to you over there. Bye everyone.